Aloha, guys. I am here with Carrie Mendoza, who is the owner and operator of Island Pet Movers. We're going to be talking about all things pet, how to bring your pet to the island, and this is just such an exciting topic. I know many of you are wondering how to make the move with your pets, and Carrie is an expert in this field. How many pets, Carrie, have you transported to the islands on average? We've been operating since 2009, so December will be 14 years, right. and we've moved approximately 55,000 animals since we started moving pets. So we move we move quite a few pets. We move about 3,000 families a year. So wow, yeah, uh, you're busy. Yeah. <laughs> we so. stay we stay steady. We do move pets on the mainland to other to other places as well. But yeah, Hawaii is definitely our our main our main goal and, and helping a lot of families in and out of the islands for sure. Thank you so much, Carrie. Well, Carrie, for people that are watching, what type of animals can be imported into the islands? I mean, because you do like, pets. Hawaii's, yeah, like so Hawaii is really strict. We can't have any like really fun stuff. I always joke if I were to move to Texas, I'm gonna have a kangaroo and my friends say why. And I said, Because I can. Um, so we can't have any kangaroos or anything really crazy here in Hawaii, but um, so for us, we predominantly are moving like dogs and cats, turtles and birds. We move a lot of turtles, a lot of birds, um, bunny rabbits, chinchillas, um, guinea pigs. So, you know, Hawaii is pretty much, it's like if it's a household pet, that's pretty much what we're moving. And there are, you know, limited restrictions. There aren't any breed restrictions for dogs other than for wolves or wolf hybrids. So we, I know we get that question a lot. People ask us like, can I move my pit bull to Hawaii? And yes, that's not a problem. There are some flight restrictions. So there are some roundabout ways that we sometimes have to move some pets because of flight restrictions. But as far as the state is concerned, pit bulls are definitely allowed to come. Just can't have a wolf or a wolf hybrid. And, and on the cat side of things, pretty much, just can't have any cat that's not been bred from a domestic cat or that's not domestic cat. So like bangles, for example, are not allowed to come to Hawaii. And I had a bangle for 16 years before I actually moved here. And I know they're like the coolest cats ever, but unfortunately they are not allowed here. So the biggest restrictions that we see more often than dogs or cats, obviously, are people who have type of exotic pets you know, pocket pets, like flying squirrels. We can't have anything like that. Ferrets, we can't bring ferrets in. And then various types of birds as well. So there are a lot of bird species that are allowed, but there is also a list of birds that are not allowed to come to the islands as well. That is beautiful. And, and Kara, what would you say would be one of the the pets that, that you say, no, we cannot, I mean, of course, snakes, right, are not allowed. Right, yeah, no Hawaii. snakes. I almost forgot about snakes because, yeah, we don't move snakes. I, I had a snake before once, too. I used <laughs> to have a Burmese python before I joined the Navy, and nobody would keep him for me, so I had to oh sell him. I sold him back to the pet store. But, um, yeah, no snakes. Snakes right. definitely not allowed. No lizards. Basically, like, no reptiles at all can be brought into the state. So, yeah. That's great to know for people that are researching, because this is a top question. Carrie, you do this in and out, like you do this 24 seven. What are the brief requirements of people that are wanting to bring their pet to Hawaii? For dogs and cats coming to Hawaii, I mean, the biggest thing is you need to have your two rabies vaccinations and the rabies titer test. All that has to be done in particular timelines in accordance with the state. If those timelines are met prior to coming in, then pets are direct release same day at their arrival. You guys are over on Hawaii Island, so if you're, somebody's trying to go to one of the neighbor islands directly, there are a little bit more restrictions as far as the timelines that are needing to be set up in advance, and then private veterinarians have to be set up on those islands. And that's because if you're coming through Honolulu, mm -hmm. then it's the state veterinarians and the state staff who are inspecting the pets or verifying your documents at arrival versus pets that are going direct to the neighbor islands. Those are all done through private veterinary clinics or through the humane societies that have opted um, into doing those programs. So they are charging additional fees for those services. Plus there's a permit that's required and the state has to issue that out in advance. A little bit more planning if you're trying to go direct. And you know, if you don't have your ducks in the row and you miss a deadline or, or within your timeline, I mean, it's kind of like the same in real estate, right? I mean, it, dates are so important and same applies to pets, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's just, and that's kind of one of the things that we do for people. I mean, obviously what we do, it's not rocket science. I mean, people are moving their pets on their own every single day. It's just one of the pieces of the move that we just completely take off of your plate as far as ensuring that your documents are done properly. We file everything directly with the state. So we know like nothing's getting lost in the mail, but really where our expertise plays in is we're booking your flights. We're handling all of those reservations. If something cancels last minute, for example, we have a hurricane going on right now in Florida. So we had a lot of pets that are flying into Florida that we've had to readjust, at, you know, on the last minute. And that's just something that you don't have to do on your own. Is that something that we're doing for you? So that's kind of the thing is we handle all of your documents. We, we sort stuff through your vet if your vet is confused on the process. A lot of vets throughout the mainland are familiar with the process, but... At the same time, there are a lot of veterinarians who don't. They look at Hawaii and they see that it's, they think we're, you know, this very foreign place. I've had to argue a lot of <laughs> with vets, just the process and the procedure that we're not uh, an international destination. It's, it's surprising how many veterinarians have, have considered us as an international destination. So, but that's something that we handle for all of our clients. But yeah, we try to make this part of their move like an easy an easy piece of the puzzle for sure. Right. And you know what, as an added comment, just so that people can get a taste of sometimes the questions that we handle, I got to ask if the water is safe to drink when they come and travel yeah. here. So it's it's just one of those things, right? We 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 look that we're so far away, but it is good yeah. to have a partner like Carrie that knows the people here, knows everything here on island procedures wise and can help you guys successfully move your pet. Carrie, how long do you think it takes to to get your pet to Hawaii from start to finish? It kind of depends on like the age of the pet and like where you are in the process of if you've already had vaccinations. If, for example, if you have a four-year-old dog who is up to date on their rabies vaccinations, you can have that pet here with direct release within 30 days, 31-ish, right. you know, depending if everything is is already, already done. If you're by chance, like you say you wanna buy a puppy and you found a breeder that you fell in love with somewhere in Idaho, and now you've got a, a you know an eight week old puppy, that puppy cannot come to Hawaii with direct release until it's about five months old. And that has to do with the, you know, the timelines of the, of the rabies vaccinations. And then when you need to wait in order to do the rabies titer test, and then you've got to wait the 30 days after that test. So it, it really kind of depends where everybody is in the process. Alternatively, if you have an older dog who's, you know, five or six years old, but for some reason you haven't kept up with their rabies vaccinations and their last one was maybe four years ago, you kind of need to start the process all over again as well to make sure that you're going to pass that titer test. The titer is a really expensive test. And unfortunately, we see often that people who have a vaccine that's older than you know, 12 to, well, about 18 months is where we recommend to get a booster on that so that you don't fail that titer test. But we see where veterinarians are not recommending that. Mm -hmm. And that's usually when people come to us, they failed the titer test, they don't know what's going on. And so when we start looking through the record, we're like, well, your, your rabies vaccine is, you know, 24 months or almost three years old. And while it is technically still valid, the reading level for the antibodies is not high enough for what the state is allowing, and that's why they're failing. So it's just little things like that that, you know, we're really making sure that people aren't wasting their money on running tests prematurely or when they do run that test prematurely and then they fail. Sometimes people definitely, they still need to move in advance of their pet so that we can either send the pet now and the pet goes to quarantine to wait out that time that needs to be you know made up either with a new test or waiting out the full 120 days or they can be left behind with friends or family on the mainland and then the pets can ship after them and so again that's something that you know we're helping them to handle as far as you know if they've left it with a friend or family member we make sure that they have smooth arrangements for the day of checking in if you know they're doing a favor for their friend or a favor for their family member we want to make sure that that's an easy solution for them that is so beautiful i think that's where it pays to hire a professional because even though you said well you know if they fail the test but to the to the person shipping out the pet is more delays Right. And yes. so you're not doing it yeah. right from the very from the very beginning because you kind of want to be hands on and doing it. Those delays may happen. Right. That is just time that, that sometimes people cannot afford for people that are wanting to ship their pet directly to Hawaii. Are there any restrictions when doing that or are there any layover restrictions that you've seen? It really it really depends where it is that they're coming from. I mean, we you know, 
prior to COVID, we were shipping United Airlines and we were flying from all these small airports all across the country. Mm-hmm. They were they they were the largest pet shipping US airline in in the in the US. But with COVID, United shut down their pet safe program. I don't foresee them bringing that back anytime soon. Right. So now we are very limited on what options are available and that has a lot to do now with the size of the kennel, the airport where somebody's coming out of, the breed of the pet. And so sometimes, yeah, if somebody's got a bulldog or a bully breed and they're on the East Coast, we're very limited. We can basically fly, you know, Hawaiian Airlines is about it coming out of the East Coast. More often, we're driving animals all the way across country and we're coming out of Los Angeles. We're using the cargo flights out of LA. Wow. So it really, everybody's going to be different. And that's kind of the thing is a lot of times a lot of people are like, oh, I just want a rate. Like, how much did you pay or how much did you pay? And it's like, <laughs> everybody's going to be different because right. you could have a, a doodle Mm-hmm. that's you know 50 pounds but your doodle could be 34 inches tall and that's right. very very limiting on what you could where you can fly in and out of and what the options are and same with the options of transferring within the islands as well we used to have a lot more options for inner island that we don't necessarily have today so there's there's a lot of little pieces of the puzzle and that's kind of like what we're doing for for people and same for like anybody who's transferring to neighbor islands like we make it to where the owners don't have to come to Honolulu at all. So right. we're picking up the pets here. They're getting a potty break. They're getting a crate cleaning if if their crates need to be cleaned. We're usually having the day kennel the pets. So they come back to our office. We have an air-conditioned kennel room. And then later they're getting transferred to whatever flight it is that, that, that they're going to be on. And that just really depends on which island they're going to, which day of the week it is, and, and what size kennel that is as well. So there's a right. lot of... A lot of little intricate pieces to it. It's not a one size fits all for sure. I love that you touched on that because that was my next question about the limitations <laughs> on weight. <laughs> yeah. so it's it not is, the it's, weight that's the problem. It's the height. It's always the height. height. Of the pet. And, that, and that's the thing too, you know, it comes back to a lot of clients will say, I have this kennel and the kennel says it's rated for dogs, you know, 70 to 90 pounds. And my dog is 75 pounds. And again, it's like, if you have a greyhound that's 72 pounds, but he's, you know, 38 inches at height because oh my they're skinny, scrawny dogs, it doesn't matter. They're still not going to fit in that kennel. So a lot of things can be quite a bit misleading. And that's where, again, we'll kind of come into play where we get, you know, we do a lot of prep work with our clients. We take videos and pictures and we're, you know, requiring multiple pictures of their pets in and out of the crate with the top on, with the top off, because we don't want them to get stuck on the day of the flight. And, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, why do we have to have all of these pictures? And it's like, look, we want you to, we want to know that on the day you get to the airport, you are not going to have any problems. You're not going to get turned away and get stuck because then we really have a big problem, right? Then you've driven sometimes several hours to get to the airport at five o'clock in the morning. There isn't going to be a store that has crates available. So we want to be very preemptive on a lot of that stuff. That is amazing. And now yeah. and let's and let's touch a little bit about the prep work, right? Because you mentioned prep work. How long do you think in advance people should start planning for their pets to come to the island? So, you know, one of it's never too early to start planning. I mean, I shouldn't say it's never too early, but the rabies titer test in itself, it's valid for 36 months. So a lot of times when, when people are reaching out to us to get quotes and they're asking us like, hey, we're thinking of moving next year. My thing is if you are planning, if you know with like 70% certainty that you are going to be moving to Hawaii, like let's just get going now. Mm-hmm. So we can get everything started. We get all your documents going. We verify your crates. We send you your crates. We make sure your pets are comfortable in their crates as long as we can. That just makes it an easier transition and a travel day for them that goes for cats as well because cats actually do tend to get used to their kennels so it's never too early to start we do have a lot of clients that will reach out to us six eight months in advance the the rules changed about five years ago uh, maybe two, i think it was 2019 then it switched from four months after the rabies titer test to just the 30 wow. days uh-huh. so that really like that loosened up a lot of a lot of people's timelines. So now it's just we do the blood test and we just have to wait the 30 days, whereas it used to be the full 120 days after that blood test. So we back before then, we did have a lot of clients who were reaching out to us 10, 14 months in advance. Now we have a lot of clients that I would say on average it's it's anywhere from 30 to 90 days. But yeah, obviously the sooner you get started, the less stress that it's going to be for you later. Right. Just kind of get all that stuff out of the way. And then then we go into just like a waiting period. People ask us like, what do we do now? And it's like, now we just wait. 
everything is everything is good until until time for us to do you know the health certificate and make the bookings and that's one thing that people don't realize a lot with pets that are flying unaccompanied which is called cargo and cargo mm -hmm. can sound really really scary by the way but cargo basically just means anything that's unaccompanied from a human's ticket so if you mail a letter to your auntie in Florida, that's going as cargo. It's just, it's an unaccompanied piece of, it's an unaccompanied piece of baggage that's on an aircraft, but there's not somebody attached to that ticket. But but one of the things that sometimes people don't realize, like, you know, you and I can book a ticket if, if we say we're gonna be going to New York and we wanna book our ticket a year from now on United Airlines or on American Airlines, like we can do that. And then the ticket is secure. We know the times. Granted, that can change as with any airline. Like we get in those emails sometimes, like your flight has changed. But with animals, for the most part, we're very limited on our allowable bookings. Some airlines, it's 10 days, some it's 14 days, some it's eight days. So a lot of times that's one thing that clients will say, like, I need to know when my pets are going so I can make my own reservations. And there's a lot of limitations that like you can't necessarily make those bookings. You're right. going to have to just trust that when we get into that booking window, hopefully we can get the timelines that work for your pets. Right. And, you know, and then people can kind of book around that or we have contingency, you know, things in place in case their flights don't necessarily line up with their pets. And so that's why we'll say, you know, like we recommend pets don't fly the same day as their owner. So that way, if there's a problem, there's somebody that can handle them on either side of that boot. Wow. Carrie, I mean, for, this sounds like a full-time job. <laughs> getting the pet to the finish line <laughs> oh my goodness i had a call at one o'clock this morning because somebody was running late to pick up her pets and wanted to let us know that Got she it. was going to be late picking up so we we do get calls you know pretty much often throughout the night usually they're just for emergency issues yeah. you know if there's some kind of an issue at check-in or something like that but you know honestly it, the, the thing for me i've i've been very fortunate to get myself into a business and in an industry that I just genuinely have a lot of passion and, and heart yes. for. Yes. And I just, I, I don't feel like I'm working. I mean, there are times right. that I'm being interrupted you know, in a dinner or something that can be a bit annoying, but honestly, like I really genuinely love what I do, but not only myself, but so do my staff. We have 15 employees that are, you know, they're all pet owners and pet lovers. The majority of our clients, we do probably, you know, good 80% of our clients are military clients. And all of my staff are either prior military, such as myself, or uh, military spouses as well. So we've all moved and moved and moved and moved, and we've moved with our pets. And so we get it, right? So we understand like that you're stressed out. We get it. Like all of our clients are stressed out, but we're here to kind of help you go through that process and the process that most all of us have also endured ourselves. Right. So. And we just, we genuinely like helping our clients. And I, and it's nice because, you know, we'll get a lot of, you know, emails and comments from our clients. And for the most part, people can genuinely see that we, we care about their pets. Right. And so it doesn't necessarily feel like a full-time job because it's, for me, it's, it's, it's more just, that's how life is. And, and I just, I really enjoy that. That is so beautiful, Carrie, and, I, and I'm pretty sure for the viewers, you can totally see how how passionate you are about the business and how involved you are into the process of making sure that the pet gets there at a, at a safely, right, to their destination. Yeah. Hearing that you're taking calls at 1 a.m., and I mean, of course, it's not beautiful, <laughs> right? But it is sometimes yeah. needed, and you're there for the pet owner, and that is that is a beautiful thing. So key, key thing to keep in mind is that if you are 70% sure if you're traveling, that you're moving, right? That's a time to call yeah. Carrie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely get started, you know? I mean, for sure, that's kind of one of the things is like, like I said, it's just, it's never too early if you know that that's something that you're going to be, totally. you know, that you're going to be moving, yeah. Now, you know, Carrie, and one of the things that we do here, you know, at Island Pet Movers as a, we're not just moving pets, but, you know, we're really focused and heavy in the industry itself and really trying to make, pet shipping safer for everybody who's flying, it, regardless of if they're flying with a pet shipper or not flying with a pet shipper. You know, I've been, I've been tapped on the shoulder from Hawaiian Airlines, Alaska Airlines, and American Airlines when they are revamping their pet policies and their pet programs. And so they're getting best practices from those of us who are their top shippers. And they legitimately are taking our 
our input to heart and they're using that when they're implementing these programs and that's been really helpful there's alaska airlines for example had a lot of stations in the summer that we were able to go ahead and fly into because of proximity of where the aircraft is and whatnot and 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 where some temperatures are and where that's located next to the next to the cargo facility but you know we're pretty proud of that here because we're not just pet shippers that are just facilitating moves, but we genuinely are trying to make this an affordable process for our clients. And we're trying to make this an affordable process for all pets, pets and their families as they're moving all around the world and not just to and from Hawaii. Well, that is beautiful. And I think also if people are inclined to check out your work and your beautiful website and all of your reviews, uh, I mean, I think those are a testament of, of, of the work and effort that you put into making sure that the pets arrive safely. Uh, Carrie, let's yeah. talk about the requirements for quarantine for pets arriving to the island. So as long as you've done everything in advance, which is what we were mentioning a bit earlier, right. we've got the two rabies vaccines, the titer, we file the documents in advance with the state, there won't be any quarantine at arrival. Everybody goes through a quarantine facility for their checks. Mm -hmm. So the pets arrive here, the airline takes them directly to the quarantine station. The quarantine station then is inspecting the documents that are arriving with the pets. They're doing a pet inspection. They're checking them for fleas and ticks and, mm -hmm. and making sure that they look overall healthy. They're scanning the microchip to verify that that's in fact the pet that all the documents were filed for. And then those pets can be picked up at the airport quarantine um, transit station. Mm -hmm. If they're going direct to one of the neighbor islands, then it's one of the private veterinarians or the you know, one of the humane societies that are handling those processes. Right. And that tends to be quite quick. And it's the same though. They're checking the pets there. They're verifying their microchip and, and everything is good. If you don't have anything done in advance, and, and we have had that, you know, we've had pets that, I mean, you can go up to Halava at the main station. There are a lot of animals up there that for whatever reason, either they don't have time or, you know, somebody didn't want to pay for the testing. I don't, everybody's got their different reasons, but right. there are a lot of animals up there. So if you don't do anything in advance, you have the choice that when they arrive here, they will go automatically up to, they get processed at the airport station. They automatically go up to the main station, which is in Halava. Right. And then once they're up there, you have the opportunity to do the process. And so you can do the rabies there and then you can do the titer test. And then you just wait out the time for the titer test, um, which tends to be about six weeks or so that they will stay right. up at uh, quarantine. Right. Or you can just do nothing and they will stay up at the quarantine station for the full 120 days. Beautiful. I think that answers that question in, in pretty good detail. Right now we're planning for the pet to arrive to Hawaii and everybody's so happy and the pet is in transit. And so what happens when the pet gets sick and during transit? Are there any procedures or troubleshooting? Yeah, so each each airline has like kind of their own policy on what it is that they're that they're allowing. If they're an a airline where they have a transit when that pet is in a transit if they're on an overnight anytime that there's a sign of a pet that's in distress they mm -hmm. typically they will reach out directly to the client they'll let them know what's happening we've had instances where airlines are calling hey this dog is limping we see the dog is favoring a leg and we've had to reach out to the client and, and the client's like oh yeah you know he's, he's got a bum leg or he's been sitting too long his mm -hmm. arthritis is kicking in but we've had also instances where dogs have completely chewed on the crate or chewed their water dishes and have broken right. a tooth. And so those pets are going straight away to the vet clinic right. and, you know, to an emergency vet and the airline is taking them, you know, to the vet to get that stuff taken care of. The majority of injuries that happen during pet travel mm -hmm. are usually from pets that injure themselves because they're not crate trained. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, like I said earlier, like it's never too early to start getting your pet really acclimatized to being in the crate. And it's just good general behavior. I mean, right. for example, you know, everything that's happening in Maui, we have a lot of families that are in temporary lodging with their animals. And, you know, if you've got to pack up and go, if your pet is used to being in a kennel, everybody's going to be in a much better situation. So just having your pet always being you know ready to be in a kennel particularly dogs it saves a lot of stress on a lot but that's where we see a lot of pets if, if they do come with a lot of nose rubs you know they're rubbing their nose on this oh, on the boy. on the side of the crate or they're pulling their teeth at the at the door trying to get out of the kennel that 
that all can be, you know, eliminated if your pets are confident in their kennels and they know like, you know, what we tell our clients is like the, the crate is their safe haven. You know, the rest of the world can be crazy. We don't know what's going on out there, but right. here in my kennel, I'm safe. And I know that right now, nothing's going to get me. And, and that's really the most important thing that we can really hammer into people is get your pets acclimated to their kennels. Right. And also, do you uh, advise them to walk them prior to? to oh, the yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's a, we, you know, one of the things that we give to our clients is like a schedule of, of the day's events and whatnot. Oh, so perfect. you don't want them to have like a massive amount of exercise because right. that also can contribute to some health issues sometimes for pets. So they, you definitely want them to have a, a little bit of a walk they you know if you can get them to definitely have a potty you know we tell our clients like don't feed on the day of the flight because yeah. you know a, yeah. a, a, a hungry pet is cranky and they're like mom where is my food like i want to eat i want to eat but unless they're diabetic or they're under some type of a medical scenario mm -hmm. a pet can go 24 hours without eating and it's going to be completely fine right we always give water they'll always have water for you know at check-in of the flight so we don't ever ask to restrict water mm -hmm. but you know a dog that has been fed and now has to poop in their crate and oh. they've been in their crate and there's there's either nowhere for them to go so they're oh. they become anxious they become worried because they have to go to the bathroom they don't right. want to go to the bathroom in the crate and it's just it causes a lot of anxiety and then if they do go in their crate like they're very embarrassed and yeah. you know and we see it like dogs are they're upset they're embarrassed so a dog that's hungry and a little bit cranky is a much better traveler than a dog that has sitting in its poop and is now you know upset and sad and embarrassed and all that other stuff so right yeah oh that's goodness. definitely something that we go through with all of our clients is you know we go through these schedules we go through the check-in time mm -hmm. you know what to expect on the on the overnight stays where we do have to do an overnight stay and then you know arrivals when they're getting here into honolulu or when they're going to one of the neighbor islands oh my goodness well carrie you just spoke my language on checklist <laughs> i mean i'm a checklist yeah. person <laughs> and the fact that you provide that to other people to your clients i mean what a blessing i mean they get a scheduling and all into a checklist format and you know they just need to follow through so for somebody that is busy 24 7 at work this can be off their plate by just having somebody else organize it right yeah yeah uh, I, I, carrie if you can briefly touch on cost i know there's different uh it's sizes so of pets. Different. like if it's everybody's diverse, so different there really isn't because i mean you could be one cat you could be one large dog you could be coming from san francisco you could be coming from florida it's really kind of all over the place right. i mean the state fee is 185 dollars the favin even the favin test we see ranging from you know, $250 to, from veterinarians on the mainland. Mm -hmm. I've seen it as high as $800 from veterinarians yes. on the mainland. So yes. it just, there's not, there's not a one size fits all for anybody. It, there's just so many things that come into play with the size of the pet, where you're going. Are you military? Do you, you know, get particular discounts? There are a lot of airlines that give a, a military rate for military, military pets. Right. So, Everybody is just, it's, it's, everybody's going to be different. One of the great things with us, we don't charge for quotes. So if you really want to know what the cost is for moving your pet, just, you can go to our website, you put in all the information, Request. as long as the information that you provide to us is the correct information, then we can get you a quote. That's going to be, you know, about the right price for your pets. Right. Based on the I love what you said about height that though. <laughs> that is because height is so tricky. Oh, I have a 50 yeah. pound doggy. How tall is he? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> really, the height is like such a big thing. Height and length. I mean, right, and that's just it. Like, for me, I've been doing this a really long time, so typically I can tell based on breed, you know, what size kennel a pet needs to be in. Like golden retrievers almost always need to be in a 700 series kennel, but we've been selling a different kennel now. It's called like a, um, a PP80 or PP90, and so that crate is shorter than a 700 but it's it's actually quite it's longer than the 700 so that's where we kind of run into trouble with a lot of the golden retrievers or some of the bigger labs is that they have a length issue so like their height isn't necessarily a problem but the length for the pet um, and that's one of the things like that we're just really helping people with. They think that they have to use a 700 series kennel. And then again, with that, we're very, very limited on what airlines and what airports we can fly out of. But sometimes we can offer, you know, a PP crate, which is a PP90 or PP80, which we can fly on a different airline. We're able to come out of the middle of the country a little bit more. So again, those are just some of the options with when you are using a pet shipper that 
we've literally seen and heard like everything, like almost every single scenario people will, will say to me, but I have a unique situation. And I'm like, I probably heard your unique situation. <laughs> um, we've been like, cause we've been doing this for almost 14 years. It's all that we do. We know more about pet shipping than pretty much anybody at any airline and the airlines will say that. So, you know, we, we, and that's just the difference too, is that you know, when you're dealing with an agent at the airline, that agent doesn't just book animals. They don't just book live animals. They could be booking, you know, booking any type of cargo or freight or live fish or, you know, dead fish that's, you know, being fished out of the ocean for putting on dinner plates. They could be shipping, you know, materials for, for building stuff. So, you know, ship animals and booking in the animals is a very small piece of what it is that they do. And sometimes those rules are changing and they may not have had it, you know, that rule passed down to them, what the change might be. But since this is all that we do, we're very, very familiar with what those rules are and how to implement those. And so oftentimes we're telling the agents like, no, 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 this is, this is actually what the policy is. And they're like, okay, let me go check. And they come back like, oh yeah, you're right. Was, yeah, we know. Um, but you know, that's kind of the difference is like, we are a small company, but it's our core competency is moving animals. Right. That's all we do. And we're really good at what we do. We are so blessed to have you on Island. You're beyond inspiring. Your passion transpires beyond. I mean, it's like you're so dedicated. I appreciate you having us on. Go ahead, girl. I, I'm, I'm a fan. Every time that somebody mentions I'm shipping my pet, I'm like, call Carrie. Because yeah. it's just like, it's too much. On, I mean, there are already people dealing with the moving of it all, moving their life, right? And so yeah. this will be a one less thing for, for them to take care of. Are there any final tips? that you can provide to to people watching any takeaways that you think that may help them with the process of shipping their animals i mean like i said the biggest thing is is honestly truly starting early getting your pets acclimated to being in their kennels yes. and you know trusting that it, this is one thing that you know clients will say to us often can i sedate my pets and the answer is no <laughs> you can sedate yourself but you cannot sit at your pet. You know? right. and, and a lot of times people, they, they underestimate our pets. They do not really give the credence to the animals that they have a lot of resiliency. And, you know, people all the time are like, oh my God, my dog, he's acting like nothing happened. I'm like, because to your dog, like nothing happened. Or they'll say, he's never flown before. And I'm like, he'll never know he flew this time. It's really a mind thing that we're often setting, you know, the owner's minds at ease. And, you know, we've had clients that'll say, oh, my dog doesn't like people. He won't go with anybody. And, you know, we show up, our drivers show up and they're like, hey, let's go for a ride. And the owner's <laughs> like, wait a minute, where are you going? And I'm like, your dogs are not as loyal as you think they are. I promise right. you that. <laughs> right. I have a good shepherd and she's the same. Anybody has a ball, their dog is going wherever you want her to go. But you know, again, that that the stress level that we feel as humans is really amplified to the pets. You know, our pets can feel that vibe and they can feel that stress. And so the more that you are prepared and the more that you get your pet prepared, everybody's going to have a lot less of a stressful day that day. And just trust in the process. That's kind of one of the things, you know, if you are working with any of the pet shippers, you know, hopefully they know the processes really well. And like I said, you know, check what their experience is, check the experience in, in the area of, of, you know, where it is that you're moving. You know, we ship into Europe all of the time. And we'll have people that will ask us like, hey, I want to ship my dog from Spain back to Hawaii. And like, yeah, we can do that. But we're going to reach out to a pet shipper who's in Spain because that's their core competency is, is on the, on that side. And then we'll receive here, you know, on the mainland and we'll do the transfers into, you know, back into the state. So that's just one of the things is like really be prepared and trust the process and just give your pets a little bit more, you know, give them a little bit more trust and value than you would think. <laughs> so right. they, they, do, they do a lot better than people think that they do for sure. That is incredible. And I think, Carrie, what you said, it's so, so true. Pets cannot talk, right? They cannot yeah. speak. They cannot say, well, I'm having a really bad experience with this shipper. They can't, right? So you as a pet owner, try to do your due diligence with the other uh, companies out there. Carrie is very responsive. We'll take your pet to the finish line in a safely manner. And she's a pleasure to talk to. So I really Again, thank you so much for having us on. We really appreciate it. You know, we're, we're here. Anybody needs any help? We don't, one, one final thing. 
people always ask, like, I want to call somebody on the phone to talk about my quote. We do everything in writing. And the reason for that is we don't want any miscommunication. We don't want any hiccups. We've had people call and they say, well, I was told this on the phone by your company. And I said, not our company. We haven't answered the phone since 2015 because <laughs> we want everything to be in writing. We just want it to be very black and white of yeah. this is what we include. We don't want, you know, there are other companies that will say we do this. And then when the time comes like, oh no, we never said that was included. Everything with us is hundred percent always going to be in writing. And that's why it's just, it's to protect us. It's to yeah. protect you as a customer. Yeah. And then there's just no questions on that. Once somebody is a client of ours and everything's in writing, then we definitely have you know, meetings and conversations in person, you know, not in person, but you know, we can have video conversations, but on the phone right. conversations, but right. the advanced stuff is always just going to be in writing just to protect everybody. Well, Carrie, where can people thank find you, you again so much? I really appreciate you bringing me on. Thank you. Thank you. I you hope you guys amazing. have a wonderful day. <laughs> You're amazing, amazing, amazing. And I'm thank really you. encouraging anybody that is thinking about bringing their pets to Hawaii to contact Carrie by email. <laughs> just go to our quotes page. It's islandpetmovers.com forward slash contact. And then you just fill out the quote information and we'll get everything back to you fairly quickly. Beautiful. She's a hardworking lady. I totally vouch for her. She's amazing. And she can just, you know, take your pet and bring it over to Hawaii. <laughs> Thank All you right, so girl. much. Thank Aloha. you so, so much. Have a beautiful day. And, and thank you so much for having this interview today. Thank you. We really appreciate <laughs> it.